guys, so we're going to be talking about Chiron in Sinistry and the reason why I wanted to talk about Chiron in Sinistry and how it plays out in the Sinistry chart is because I've seen heavily aspected Chiron in a lot of significant Sinistry charts, composite charts, charts of married couples, relationships, intimate relationships, including my own and it can have such a profound effect on ourselves and the relationship um, and that's not always immediately sort of detected or understood so I do want to delve a little bit into um, Chiron and how it plays out in Sinistry and, and you'll see why as well as we go on in the video. So we'll start with the mythology of Chiron because it helps to sort of set the scene and understand what we're sort of talking about, what energy we're talking about. So in Greek mythology, Chiron is um, he's a demigod, he's immortal and he's the wisest and most just of all of the centaurs and he was known for being the teacher or mentor of Achilles. Uh, centaurs were really known for being wild, lustful, indulgent, um, and sometimes violent, but Chiron was more intelligent, he was more civilized, um, and this was because he wasn't directly related to the other centaurs. He was actually the son of Chiron and Philia, um, but they abandoned him and were ashamed of him, so he was orphaned and he was taken under the wing of Apollo. And Apollo taught him personal skills, how to rise above his beastly nature, also taught him hunting, archery, medicine, music, gymnastics, um, and the art of prophecy. And Chiron was also later credited with the discovery of botany and pharmacy and the science of herbs and medicine. And he was also a well-known and respected oracle and astrologer. And he was also the first centaur to be respected as a tutor, as a teacher. So he really is that teaching, wise, parental kind of um, figure for a lot of heroes. Um, the most known heroes obviously being Achilles, Perseus, Asclepius, Jason, Dionysus, Telamon. Um, these were pupils of Chiron. And what happened one day was accidentally one of Hercules' poisoned arrows hit Chiron. So he was in never-ending pain because of this wound and he ended up giving his life up for Prometheus. So he gave his immortality to Prometheus um, so that he could have his freedom because Prometheus was imprisoned by Zeus for giving fire to man and this representing imagination and intuition. He gave this to man. Then Zeus decided to place him, uh, Chiron, amongst the stars um, because of this heroic and selfless gesture and he was then honoured with the constellation of Centaurus. So hopefully you understand a little bit what Chiron is, the mythology of Chiron and how this, when we see this in our charts, the sign, the aspects, um, the house placement, all of that can tell us where maybe we've gone through a journey of, of pain and how we can sort of grow from that and become very compassionate for others who maybe have also gone through the same pain. And so in Sinistry, I think we can all agree that relationships are quite a, a journey and they can be incredibly humbling and and healing at the end of the day. Um, relationships sometimes wound or sometimes heal. Maybe there's sometimes a bit of both in a relationship. So this will be Chiron in the charts. And often we do sum up Chiron to be a wound and that's really what we focus on. So yeah, in a way it can be a, a wound, um, a feeling of our, a disability, a painful vulnerability, a scar, or something we've had to go through or, or a seemingly broken part of ourself that we don't want to show to others because it's painful enough to confront ourselves, let alone um, showing it to other people. Chiron also makes us feel like we can never succeed or never give up. We have to live with this. And then sometimes we do realize that our efforts are, are sometimes futile when we're fighting against something or being angry or upset about something, when we're better off accepting it instead. So this is the wound, but it can also be the cure and uh, represent the pilgrimage that we go on to find the cure. And it also acts as a, a real inner guide and a teacher, just as Chiron was. And Chiron's also been explained as the bridge um, of the inner personal planets and the outer planets, our personal environment and the wider collective external environment, because it sits right on the edge of Saturn, which is at the end of the in inner personal planets. It's kind of like a gateway of maturation before we can really develop and grow um, and, and evolve our consciousness in our short sort of journey of our lifetimes. And But also on a bigger scale, like I say, it really also plays out on the collective consciousness. 
So this bridge, it can also represent um, that thin layer separating physical matter, which is the animal body of the centaur, um, from the spiritual realm, which is the human body. So if you've seen the symbol for Chiron, it looks like a key. And this is also very symbolic as well. It's a, it's a key that opens us up when we feel vulnerable, vulnerable, when we allow ourselves to be vulnerable. And how much more vulnerable can we get than in love? When we give our hearts, we give our everything to someone when we're in love. And because with Chiron, we're forced or, in, or encouraged um, to face our own pain. With Chiron, that's prominent, a lot of aspects going on in Sinistry. A partner could also be a catalyst for initiating this. So relationships, are they're real, they're messy, they're painful, but through this pain, can we learn these ultimate sort of Chiron lessons, which are to be humbled and through recognizing another's pain. If we hurt, we can sense when other people are hurting and how to comfort them. And a deep sense of understanding other people comes from that. And we're very social beings. This is, we're all part of one big lesson of learning and we learn together. And this really gives like a development of our psyche, a real understanding that it's not always about overcoming or beating or or completely eradicating something it's or our pain or something difficult it's more about being there for others and developing insight and perspective um, objectivity and learning to live with life's harshness sometimes and I also see Chiron as something where rediscovering or we're re-appreciating is something that was already within us it was there all along almost when we stop trying to fix ourselves do we then see it and have compassion for ourselves that's the biggest thing to have compassion for ourselves and love even if we're not perfect or we have this thing that that is painful or an experience that we wish we didn't have still being able to love ourselves for it and this is just like chiron overcame the rejection of his parents um and became the most famous centaur while remaining loving and compassionate and instead of being bitter or resentful. So if we are triggered by something, by something our partner does, or you know, when especially when that Chiron's been aspected by our, our partner's personal planet, for instance, if we can just sit with that pain instead of running from it or attempting any kind of defense against it, um, it turns into the most beautiful insights and healing. So our own pain can be the most beautiful gift, a gift that we can give to other people in the form of wisdom. And wisdom is really when you feel the truth. It's not by reading about it or intellectually understanding it. It's really feeling, feeling something that you've been through and you've experienced and you now deeply, deeply understand. And there can be many truths, but I think wisdom is when we see um, all of them without judgment. And I think that's another Chiron lesson is limit the judgment that we have on ourselves and other people. So it's okay to be broken, hurt, feeling like you're unable to do things. Um, you're still lovable and you're still beautiful and intelligent or whatever your Chiron is telling you you're not or you can't do. And this is what they mean when they say this is this is being human because Chiron helps us join together in our humanity. And it doesn't matter how rich or how opulent your life is, we all have this, this sense within us, this pain that we have to go through in life. We all have a fragility. Um, so we need to have empathy for others and we all just wanna be loved no matter what. So I really recommend going to your natal chart, seeing what your Chiron is doing, what sign it's in, aspects, to see what gift you're able to give to other people. See it as a gift, see it as a, a learning, a humbling experience, not just something dark and painful. And, and often it can be very, very painful, but that's the point. And actually maybe the more rewarding that healing can be for you. So for example, my Chiron's in Virgo in the eighth house. So my gift is helping people um, come to some inner transformation psychologically, emotionally, um, through delving deep into their subconscious things that they have buried away and giving them guidance on that kind of journey because I myself has done, have done a lot of inner work and psychological work. So that's what I, I've done and I, I, how I can help. 
And our Chiron can represent people, like with anything in astrology, these, it's a really all-encompassing thing when it comes to life. It can represent people, especially if it's aspecting a personal partner of a partner. Um, it can represent circumstances, objects even, um, places in our lives. And Chiron can also manifest as, as like a physical injury um, or that we have issues healing. So like Chiron being shot with the, the poison arrow, he was unable to heal. And this can really be if you have it like in, in a physical house, that's what you're meant to do is physical healing. So in the first house or Aries or um, an earth sign, the physical body. And obviously the different archetypes are all over a different part of the body. So that's another way to look into maybe what area of the body and physicality do we need to look into healing and paying more attention to and having more compassion towards. And even going back in your life and seeing what people may have triggered your Chiron lessons if their natal chart aspects your Chiron at all. I've had quite a few instances with people having Virgo placements like Sun or Moon conjunct my Chiron. And my Chiron is also scoring my Mars. And they've given me incredible lessons as to how to stand up for myself, how to be assertive without being aggressive. When is, the, what is the appropriate level of fight push back to the level of, um, competition or aggressiveness towards me and how to conduct myself in a stressful and triggering situation so with mars placements it's definitely about assertion and and to not overreact or, or react impulsively or rash and at the same time stand up for myself as well so um, with chiron aspecting it being in aries or aspecting mars or anything like that it can be lessons similar to that so with the hard aspects to Chiron, like the square, the opposition, the inconjunct, um, these can be painful, maybe bringing up old wounds or creating new wounds sometimes. And it can feel very confronting um, and wrong and awkward sometimes. Like it might take a lot for two people to overcome these things together and to be happy. And the easy and flowing aspects like the tri and the sextile create a very healing relationship and there's an ease and relief um, of being around each other and, and loving each other that's very healing and comforting. And also when Chiron's aspecting the angles in the chart, they can be very physically felt and yeah, like I say, either healing or, or provoking depending on that aspect. And I think there's also this sense of instincts when it comes to Chiron, it being an animal sort of archetype or part animal archetype. Um, and so maybe that's why it comes up so strong in Sinistry is because our instincts for healing and soul learning in, is so strong that we really seek that out in other people in our relationships life wants us to grow i think i truly believe that it doesn't just put us in bad situations just because it, it pushes us to grow to to be better or the best version of ourselves that we can and it's going to be testing you know we're going to have to not fall into a victim mentality and really pick ourselves up and and really realize the opportunity for growth um even in the darkest of times sometimes so learning to overcome these and, and work with the subconscious, work with our repressed emotions or whatever we may have, and we all have something like this, so we can use more of our evolved mind and bring that in balance. Another thing we can do with Chiron in Sinistry is project our pain onto our partner. And this isn't the same as our partner coming into our lives and, and playing out our Chiron. They would do that without even noticing. But the difference with projection is actively not taking responsibility for it. We're trying to place our pain elsewhere so we don't have to deal with it. It's a defense mechanism. Sometimes the, the id, the ego, doesn't know how to deal with something so painful. So it projects it outward or it buries it. There's different coping me mechanisms. But this is one. And we also may really deeply fear being rejected for our wound. So for example, Chiron and Gemini or third house may have um, shame or guilt or a feeling of not being intelligent or articulate enough. So they pick apart their partner's words and communication style and intelligence. And this isn't good because we just end up hurting each other. And instead of owning our own pain and getting our partner's respect for doing that as well and our own building our own integrity for owning up to it and also our partner's empathy you know we just hurt each other so there's a much better way to deal with that so it's very important to understand our chiron and understand if we may be projecting it because if we don't know what it is we don't know if we're projecting it
Another understanding I have with my Chiron in Virgo, and a lot of people my age will have Chiron in Virgo, is an opportunity to sort of travel on this journey of spiritual unfoldment that is, that is firmly rooted in the physical body. It's a real earthly, bodily, gut-wrenching sort of healing journey. Um, picking apart your health, your diet, your routines, never feeling good enough, always needing to perfect something. By looking at how we nourish um, our mental health um, through self-talk, through um, nutrition as well, we know that Virgo rules the sixth house of health. And in sinistry, I think this is for all aspects, not just Chiron, but all aspects, all the hardest to get through kind of aspects are also the most binding because it can be through that difficulty that we truly see and appreciate the other person. So I think people come into our life to help us see our Chiron so we can see how to take our care of ourselves, even if we feel like we're not that good at it. But with that bit of insight and compassion, it can be incredibly healing and it can really soften that pain and, and help us see another way. And I have just a few examples of some sinistry charts with Chiron in it that I wanted to share. So Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, her Chiron is conjunct his moon. And this is quite special because obviously his moon, it, it represents the mother figure um, in his life. And it was a very big, um, important relationship for him in his life. It's a sore spot for him, I think, as well. So she's incredibly healing for him in this way, you know, maybe restoring a sense of nurturing that he maybe missed out on a lot of and bringing some softness back into his life. And it's also making a trine there to his son. So yeah, helping healing him, his sense of identity um, and his ego. As a man, this is a very powerful, um, powerfully felt. So we also have his Chiron trining her Jupiter. So that's supporting her ideas and beliefs, which she has been kind of ridiculed for, but he would seem like a bit of relief or brings this agreeableness um, to this, which would be very healing for her. And I think she had some issues also with her father and Harry's Chiron trining her Saturn, Jupiter conjunction, as well as sextiling her son. Again, I think he's being this big, compassionate bridge of understanding and healing for that relationship in her life as well. There's a reason these two want to stay in their bubble and they have an incredibly healing relationship. So let me know what you think of those charts and leave a like or comment and I'll see you soon.